Yeah, thank you, Andreas. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I have the pleasure to start this session by giving you information about the Vela system for HCV and HIV uh, sequencing, followed by my other speakers who are the users of the, of the technology and they report their experience. Uh, as, as Andreas mentioned, uh, Vela has developed a workflow for NGS that is starting with a, oh, sorry, that is starting with a automated sample preparation system. With the, with the nucleic acid prepared, the user has the option to either go into qPCR or to follow this pathway down here on, on next generation sequencing based on ion torrent. In the end, in both cases, there is an uh, a automated reporting software system that's been proprietary developed by, uh, by Vela. And uh, in the end, you will have a final report on quality of, of, your, of your runs and also on, on the clinical data, of course. Very briefly, you had uh, the pleasure probably to attend the uh, plenary session yesterday where we had an excellent talk about technologies and next generation sequencing, so I'm not going into much detail here. Uh, sufficient to say that we are using ion torrent technology that originally developed by, by Life Technologies, and we have licensed that technology. Basically what it is, we're measuring protons released by binding events in, in the DNA or RNA, and uh, by these uh, protein releases, pH change are recorded, and the pH change records are translated into uh, sequence information. The, the main technology part here is the, is the 318 chip from Life Technologies, which we're using for throughout all our assays, both in infectious diseases and our other area, which is not covered today, is oncology using the same, the same technology. When you, when you look at the workflow we developed, and this is the first automated workflow developed for NGS to our knowledge. Uh, this, the different steps are shown here. RNA, this is an example for HIV genotyping. It's nearly exactly the same for HCV, so HIV genotyping example would, would do. So we're starting with RNA extraction in this case, library preparation, template preparation, sequencing, and then the data analysis and reporting system. When you look at the instrumentation needed, this is an automated robotic system developed in collaboration with Eppendorf in Germany. So it's an automated extraction system that delivers, uh, that delivers the, uh, the RNA or DNA to be, uh, to be uh, put into a PCR. And from then on, you just proceed with the template preparation sequencing on the Sentosa system. And then the uh, reporting system, as I mentioned already, is a proprietary uh, VELA system. Regions, uh, total assay, total uh, nucleic acid uh, extraction kits also developed by Vela. Uh, S, uh, Sentosa ST template kit is more or less uh, um, a thermo, a thermo Fisher um, technology. Then the 318 chip already mentioned and the sequencing kit. Software shown here, Sentosa Link is a software that links the data output to your laboratory system. So you can individualize all the information generated by the system and feed directly in, into your laboratory information system. Uh, the Sentosa software, Sentosa students, Sentosa report software are coming, with the, uh, are coming together with the technology, with the workflow. In terms of timing, the, the whole workflow for HIV takes about two and a half days. For HCV, it's a little bit shorter. So that's a significant improvement from Sanger sequencing, as, as you all know. And uh, in day one, you're starting at 9 o'clock in the, in the morning, and uh, at, at uh, 6.15 in, in, the, in the evening, you can go for the over, overnight uh, reaction, which is on the OT2. And then the next day at 9 o'clock, you can start uh, doing the IG, uh, ion uh, torrent BGM sequencing, um, which is then finalized by, uh, um, by the by um, 17, by 7, 7.30 in the, in, the, in the evening. So this is all fully automated. The total hands-on time for the whole system is only two hours. The other thing which we, we spend a lot of time on and, and, uh, and put efforts in is uh, the control concept. As you all know, uh, for single gene detection, quality control is a, is a given. Everybody knows how to do that. This is not the same for NGS. In, NG, in the different NGS system, there is no uniform control system. So we had to develop our own system. 
And that is uh, described in, in more detail in a publication by Chen and co-workers, which uh, was just published in August this year in the Journal of Applied um, uh, Laboratory Medicine uh, by AACC. So what you can see here is we, we're using the different color codes are given here, the clinical samples in, in blue, controlled water in, in white, system control and extraction control in, in orange or, or red. So what you see here, we're using per run, 15 clinical samples in one run, plus one, one system control. And the system control is a high concentration plasma DNA um, that is a process as a standalone sample itself, which is shown here. Um, this one here, right? And then we also have an extraction control. Uh, it's a low concentration plasmid DNA. It may also cause a sensitivity control. Uh, EC spike into all the samples, so you have a full control over the whole process. Uh, both controls go through the whole extraction, the library prep, template preparation, and sequencing. So. In, in, uh, in summary, we're able to control by this approach contamination by the non-template control we, we're inserting, the extraction failure if there's any, the workflow failure, library prep onwards and false negative and so on, and also the presence of inhibitors. Uh, all these experiments are described in detail in, in this paper cited here. Now let me go uh, ahead, this was a little bit of an other technology uh, Go more specifically into the assays, HCV. This is the genome targets we're looking at. And for HCV, we're doing two things. One is genotyping. The other one is determination of resistance-associated variants. And as you can see here, the genotyping, we're covering three regions. And these three regions are the three regions where the, the, the most modern drugs for HCV treatment are active. It's NS3, NS5A, and NS5B. The genotyping for all the HCV genotypes we're looking at, and we're typing genotype one to six, is all done in the NS5B region, which is the most reliable. I think literature really agrees that this is the most reliable region to, to be used. It's not anymore the five prime uh, UTR, which we use in the very beginning of genotyping. And then, of course, uh, the serum proteins NS3 and NS5, we are not using for genotyping, but only for resistance-associated variant testing. Okay, there's been a lot of discussion after the introduction of the directly acting antiviral agents, DAAs, back in 19, 2007, the first generation came out, followed by the second generation in 2013. The efficiency of the second generation drugs is extremely high, as you, as you all may know. The cure rate for HCV with these drugs is more than 90%. So what's the question, why do we still need to do our uh, genotyping and why do we need to, do, uh, need to do REV testing? So if you look at the total number published by WHO recently, it's 190 million infections HCV worldwide right now, and that number is a conservative number, so it may, be, may well be over 200. So even if you have a treatment, a treatment uh, a success of more than 90%, there is a large number of patients that fail treatment. In addition to this, uh, due to the high cost of the new drugs, not everybody in the world have access to these drugs. There's still a minority of the people in the Western world who have really access to the drugs. Now, the directly acting act antiviral agents, as I mentioned, still need genotype specific treatment, uh, still are based on genotype specific treatment recommendations. And the RAV analysis is, can be used for determination of uh, treatment failure. It, in some, some many cases, uh, we also see failures in advanced disease, especially in uh, decompensated cirrhosis patients. There are pre-existing RAVs, as you will see from my other uh, colleagues here who are presenting today. And there's still, over time, uh, at least in theory, there will be RX uh, ther uh, therapeutic uh, selection pressure. The other thing which is delivered by that system is very accurate subtyping, which has not been that easy with the line processes which have been used in the past. So we're getting additional information which may be useful in the future because now we're having the first time uh, more subtype reliability than before. And not last but not least, not on that slide, this essay can determine mixed infections. And I think we, uh, some, of, some of the uh, presenters later on will have uh, some data on this. Now this is just to reinforce the statement that you still need genotyping for 
for steering and, and monitoring of disease. This is WHO recommendations with the different drugs on the market. This is not all the drugs on the market, of course, but the point, the point I want to make here is that, as you can see, all the drug combinations and iteration is determined by genotype. So accurate genotyping is absolutely essential for choosing the right drug, even with the new agents. Uh, this is a summary of the assay features of, of the uh, HCV NGS assay. So as I mentioned, you can run 15 clinical samples in one, in one run. Sensitivity uh, for a, you know, gen genotypes 1, 2, 3, and 4 is at 1,000 international units per milliliter. It's a little higher for genotypes 5 and 6. Why is that? Very simple, because we didn't have enough samples to test. So we were very conservative to, to really put it there. Uh, it may, may change over time once we have more samples in the clinical studies. Analytical specificity have also been tested according to standard procedures. Uh, this is a list of viruses which have been tested. It's not, a comp it's not the full list yet, but uh, we, we don't see any interference with that. Reproducibility is close to 99%, at least in our hands when we develop the assay in R&D. Serum and plasma can be used. We're using uh, for the HCV 700 uh, microliters. And for con contamination control, we're using the UDG system, which is not a total innovation. Many, many other companies are using the same. So you, you're destroying uh, amplicons which are not wanted. Two working days, as I mentioned, hands-on time, two to two, two and a half hours, and the whole system is fully automated. <laughs> this is the first study we did with that essay when, when we had developed it, and that's a study that was done by the, Channel Hosp by the University Hospital in Singapore by Professor Cohen and co-workers. The data have been presented at the ASLD meeting last year in San Francisco. And what they did, they have, they have the, the Siemens uh, line probe essay as a routine essay. And what they did, they compared their own system against the Vela system. So they tested 150 samples total. This is what consecutive samples unselected. And they found 16 discrepancies between the Siemens system and, and the, the Vela system. So, and uh, they went, uh, went out and did sec uh, Sanger sequencing on these 16 samples, 16 discrepant samples. And the data, the results are shown here. This is uh, the 16 samples which were tested. The viral load is given here. The genotype uh, by the recent assay, the Lyme probe assay, is recorded here. The genotype by Vela is, is um, recorded here. And the genotype by Sanger sequencing, which is a gold standard, is in the last column. As you can see, there was 100% agreement between the Vela NGS system and the Sanger system. So in, what that means in, in reality is that in, in several cases, especially most concerning are the 1Bs, which are confused with the genotype 6. Uh, the treatment would have not been, been uh, optimally uh, um, uh, given. Also, the genotype 4 and 3 is, is concerning, and 6 and 3. Uh, interesting enough, and I, I'm saying this because the other speakers don't have a lot of data on genotype 6. In this, in this study, we had a lot of genotype 6. This is done in Southeast Asia, where genotype 6 is highly prevalent, followed by genotype 1. So this is, uh, is data which, which you may or may not um, find very useful for Europe, but we'll see more data on, on genotype uh, one and, and other genotypes, especially three, in, which are prevalent in Europe. As you can see here, the seven genotype five um, samples which were added to that samples were purchased from Africa. They're not, they're not existing in Asia. Right. So this was the first study we did, and, and there are many others uh, to follow, and uh, we'll, we'll hear about more studies today. Now, there's a, a guideline recommendation by the American Association for the Study of the Liver, AASLD, which came out in April time frame, and that is the first time in hepatology that there is a recommendation on testing for resistance-associated variants. This is a very comprehensive document. I can, you can download it from the internet, but when you look at the variants we're calling resistance variants for HCV, all the variants in, in the Vela assay are listed here. It's about 130 in total. And the ones, and here is the, the sequencing coverage is given here in genotype 1, it's 1 to, in code 1 to 213, and uh, for NS5 and NS3, and NS5A is 12 to 200, NS5B is 337 to 584, 885, and um, as I said, the, 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 um, the REVs are given here. What's, what's marked in red 
are the RABs that are covered by the AASLD guidelines. In more detail shown here, these are especially the NS3 and NS5A region where most of the resistance associated variants are occurring. And I think the hotspot in the future will mostly be NS5 because we see a lot of uh, resistance associated variants uh, coming up in that region. So let me switch uh, briefly to the HIV assay, which is a little bit um, uh, not delayed, but it's been developed after the HCV assay, so we're not at the same stage. It's not yet HCV mark. It's on the market now for RUO purposes, RUO use only. And this is what you, what you see. Uh, this is a, the, the genome targets we're looking at. We're looking at the protease and reverse transcriptase genes. In addition, we're looking at the integrase gene at the same time. So what you get in one run is RT, is protease, and, and, uh, and integrase. And I don't believe there is, with the, with the withdrawal of the Siemens true gene assay from the market, that is the only assay which can do that. We're generating two amplicons in this case, one of 1,000 and the other one is 1,500 base pairs, which are then used for library preparation and, and, uh, and sequencing later on. This is data from the, uh, from the Thai HIV Reference Center in Bangkok. They are using this assay now on a routine basis. And this is published by Vasun and co-workers in clinical chemistry in, in uh, August this year. And uh, this is actually a summary of three different studies. What you see here is um, the number of samples tested in this lab was 620 at this time when, when the data were recorded. The percentage uh, correctly determined, this is uh, against the true gene assay, was 96%. This is, however, as you can see, it's a different geographic area, it's Thailand, so you have a very, very high prevalence of HIV AE subtype. They don't have that high prevalence of the B subtype as we have in Europe and in the United States. However, they had a, um, a small number of 34 B samples, BC, uh, most uh, recombinants in A1, and they got 100% uh, coverage. If you look at the viral load below, between 1,000 and 2,000, the overall coverage is still at 83%. We're recommending, however, to go not below 2,000. In the next generation assay, that sensitivity will be, however, increased. The same laboratory did uh, 199 samples. They looked at comparison to the Siemens true gene, which is off the market in the meantime, and we got 100% agreement on 98% uh, in reverse transcriptase and 100% protease. They had no requests for integrase because integrase is not, not used in Thailand for HIV treatment. So we, we're doing currently studies also to cover integrase. And we also did QCMD testing, which was completed um, at, with 100% uh, hit rate accuracy. So this is a summary of, of, the, essay, um, of the essay features. Core technology at GS, automated turnaround time, as I already mentioned, serum and plasma, as I already mentioned, uh, specimen treatment is not required. 60 clinical samples per test kit. This is the commercial packaging. And uh, HIV coverage is, of, is HIV 1 group M. We're not looking at, at other uh, subtypes, not group O, and we're also not looking at uh, HIV 2. And uh, UDG system I already mentioned, and the fully, uh, full automation I already mentioned too. Last but not least, uh, when, you look at, when you look at HIV sequencing, which is a lot more established and well-established, actually, in, in, uh, for a long time, uh, we're looking at comparison of sequences to special databases. And the most, the most important database for the time being is still the Stanford database. And so Vela took a license from Stanford, and we're working closely with, it, with Stanford, uh, Stanford scientists on, on the evaluation of the assay as well to, um, to, to align our sequence information with the Stanford database. As you will hear in one of the presentations today, there's also now the feature in the essay, which is a new feature that you can download, you can use the FASA file, the files to also compare your sequences to other, to other databases like the Riga database, like uh, the French database, and, and other than the German database. So with that, uh, I'd like to hand over to the next speaker. Thank you for your attention. And uh, it's Christophe Rodriguez from, from Paris, France who will uh, continue and report on, on his experience with the essay.